Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, we are going to be doing some fun frolic, I'll tell you that right now. We're going to be looking at part one, where we do all of the NHL teams, who's going to have a breakout year, and who's going to have a breakdown year. We may talk about more than one player, but we're going to select one from each that I think are going to have a good chance of having either a breakout season or a breakdown season. So it should be interesting. Let me know in the comment section what you think of each one of these or just for your favorite team or what have you. And get yourself subscribed, my friends, because I'll tell you, there will be frolic. There will be frolic in the land for sure. Perlo, this is all part of the Perlo Wisdom Show, Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Hockey is coming right around this, the corner, and uh, I'll be doing live analysis, game analysis with Peyton on the radio, Off the Wall Hockey, and Steel from Steel Flyers, and maybe other people as well. And you're going to want to be part of that because I'll tell you, man, it is good times. We just did our team ratings, uh, what you least like and more like, plus minus. Check that video out. Of course, we had some great trade videos that we did. And uh, we had, oh, by the when uh, Kessel, everybody laughed at me when I said Kessel, was, uh, was, there was a good chance he goes to Vegas when I did my Kessel video. He wasn't my number one spot, but I think it was like third. We took Vegas. Sure as heck. He went to Vegas. That's why you want to sub up and be part of it. We're fairly accurate with our predictions. And uh, it's so much fun. All right. Let's take a look at the first. We're going to go from Anaheim to Minnesota. Looking at breakout and breakdown seasons. Okay. Anaheim. I've got it right here in my trusty journal that I write every day, getting in between my 14 naps. By the way, 14 naps a day, that's, uh, that's what keeps the doctors away. The doctors don't want you to know that. Neither does the world. The world wants you to go out and work hard. And, yeah, 14 naps a day, you'll live till you're 136 or so. Okay. I'm laughing right now. Please don't do that. Okay. Uh, Anaheim, breakout season. Well, they got lots of guys. I mean, let's. I think Trevor Zegers could break out even more. I, I think it's pretty likely he'll break out even more. Uh, Troy Terry, maybe, maybe not. I mean, he might be right where in his wheelhouse of what he's going to be. Uh, but, and of course, Mason McTavish is only 19. And uh, he already looked pretty stellar last year. So those are all possibilities. I also love my, I love me some Isaac Lundestrom. This team has got a lot of breakout players. But for me, my guy, I'm taking Jamie Drysdale. I think Jamie Drysdale, and it's funny because a lot of people are saying that Drysdale is not going to have a breakout season because they brought in John Klingberg, and he's going to get less ice time and all of those sort of things like that. I think he's going to get less on him. There's going to be less paying attention to Drysdale and more paying attention to Klingberg, which is going to free him up to play a game against sometimes easier competition as far as player to player is concerned. And I think that's going to help him a lot. I don't think his ice time is going to change. You can still give. Uh, he had 19 minutes last last year. Uh, there's no reason why he can't take my guy that I think is going to fall's minutes. And that is Shattenkirk. I think Shattenkirk is on his way down here in this spot. Drysdale will be taking, I believe, Shattenkirk's minutes. Shattenkirk is going to maybe take a back seat, and I think willingly as well. Drysdale is a beast. He knows it. He's getting long in the tooth. May even be looking at getting traded at the deadline. So you take the minutes away from Shattenkirk. You give him to Drysdale. I still think he gets uh, he can get he gets power play time. 
him and John Klingberg will split it up on the top pairing. But more than that, his five-on-five -five play will get, he'll get more five-on-five -five play. And I think he's a great five-on-five -five guy. So will his point production increase? Possibly. Maybe, I think he probably gets about 40 points. But I think as an overall player, you're going to see Drysdale take off this year. It's going to be amazing. So those are my two. Tell me, Anaheim fans, comment in the comment section. Sub up to my YouTube channel. On Facebook, that's a little difficult. You got to actually go to my channel, search Perlo Wisdom, and get yourself subbed up. Tell me what you think about it in the comment section there. All right, Arizona Coyote. And you're like, there's nobody going to break out here. Well, I got one guy. I got one guy. Um, it's Moser. Is, is that how you say it, by the way? Now, he, they don't even have Moser here in on the actual roster. They have him in the uh, minors, Yanis Moser, which is, to me, absurd. He was looking absolutely fantastic last year. And I think he's I, I think he's ready for prime time. He's going to get much more of a chance this year. Uh, and the guy that I think is going to drop for the Coyotes, Fall, the breakdown player, is a guy that's already been breaking down a lot. And they picked up from, and I'm pointing at him right here, Patrick Nemeth. I think Moser picks up Nemeth's spot. Nemeth plays as the seventh guy when injuries come up. And uh, possibly even move Chikrin over to the right side and play Moser with him. Whether that's assuming Chikrin sticks around, of course. But I don't think Patrick, I think Patrick Nemeth is going to have a tough time even making this lineup. Uh, and Moser certainly needs the ice time. So that's my going to, uh, the other one I almost took was, and I'm going to just give it a, give him a, some props here is Nick Ritchie. Nick Ritchie looked great when he left after he left Toronto there, as far as offensively is concerned. And uh, I could see him having a pretty decent year this year. Finally, maybe found a home where there's no pressure on him whatsoever. I mean, really, like seriously, no pressure. If they lose in Arizona, it's not that big of a deal. And I think that's helped him out a lot. So that would be my other one there. But I'm going to go with Moser. I just like the way he, what I saw from him last year. Okay. Next, Boston Bruins. Breakout or and breakdown player for the Boston Bruins. Um, I think it's possible Jake DeBrus could be there as a breakout player, but I need to see more of it yet. Uh, it looks like his attitude has changed and, and that. So I'm going to say that I'm going to give him a mention, but I think it's Swayman. Swayman's now going to be 24 years old. His numbers were decent last year, but man, I mean, there were moments when Swayman just looked absolutely insane. And I think there's going to be more of those moments this year. This is what I, I think this is going to be his big breakout year. He's going to do fantastic. I don't know if it's going to, how much it's going to get Boston to where they need to go. I mean, but he's certainly going to help a lot for sure. And as far as a breakdown, I hate to do this, man. I hate to do this, but. I think it's David Krejci. Um, if you look at David, David Krejci, well, his numbers in Czechia was pretty good last year, you'll say. But, and I believe that was 46 points in 51 games. I'm sorry, but that's not really a strong, uh, that's not really a strong uh, league. And, I want to see more than a point a game, to tell you the honest truth, if you're going to play in that league. I, I think maybe like 35, 40 points, something like that. I don't know what anybody's expecting out there. If you're looking for the 60, 70 point guy that you saw before, I don't see it. And uh, I think that's going to be disappointing to a lot of Boston fans. And I hope I'm wrong. Let me tell you that right now. I really hope I'm wrong here. But... At 37 years old, after taking time off away from the league, not really crushing it considering it was like, like if that was a KHL and he was almost a point a game, okay, I got you. That's, that's different. But in the Czech League, it's not spectacular. So that's my guy. 
Uh, I think he takes a he's a breakdown. He's the breakdown player. The other one, honorable mention, is uh, Craig Smith. He's just 33 now. I could see him taking a dive, maybe getting beat out by Oscar Steen and stuff like that. So that's my breakout player and uh, breakdown player, Boston Bruins fans. Let me know. Sub yourself up to the channel and tell me what you think about that. And you don't need to be – that's what I love about Boston fans. They don't pull any punches. You don't need to pull any punches. Tell me whatever. But remember – I'm not going to be pulling any punches either. We're going to have fun and we're going to talk. And sometimes it's going to get a little heated because people are passionate about their players. If you're not that type of person, don't worry about it. I'd love to talk to you though. Give me a comment in the comment section. All right, Buffalo Sabres. Break out and break down players for the Buffalo Sabres. Break out was tough. Because there's a lot of players that could have a breakout season here. Casey Middlestat, uh, Jack Quinn, which isn't really a breakout because it would just be a great first season, pretty much. Um, you know, Rasmus Dahlin could go off, and I think that's very possible. I almost picked Rasmus Dahlin, but I'm taking Dylan Cousins. I just, at 21 years old, he had 38 points in 79 games, playing on the third line mostly. And I think he's going to take Casey Middlestat's spot there, and I think he could very well go off. He is my breakout player for the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, he, he's, his trajectory has been going up every year. Everything screams just getting better and better and better for, Dil for Dylan Cousins. I love him. I love the pick when they made it, and I love him now. Uh, as far as the breakdown player is concerned, this is going to seem odd, I think, uh, to a lot of fans out there, but I think it's Enrique Yokiharu. Um, analytically speaking, he's actually fairly weak. And Elia, uh, Ilya Lyabushkin always seems to get take roster spots everywhere he goes. He's solid defensively. He's a very good defensive player, and I think he would actually be a lot better for Owen Power, which would bring Yokiharu down with Bryson, and uh, probably take away some of his minutes there. I think that could very well end up happening here. Um, this was tough because there wasn't really anybody that I uh, found strongly to have a breakdown year, which bodes well for Buffalo Sabres. Um, I'm thinking more likely that he'll just keep on going the way he is, and he might even actually improve. So, but... I just think Ilya Lyabushkin could has shown that he has the ability and consistently has taken spots from people, and I very well could see it happening with Enrique Yokiharu. Honorable mention for breakout, by the way, was Eric Calmer. He he was a great pickup. This could be his breakout year. Now I had to pick who I think most assuredly was going to have a breakout year. I am not most assured about Eric Calmer having a breakout year. He's 27. He had one good year in a backup role with Winnipeg. So wonderful if he is. I'm sure Buffalo has looked to their goalie scouts and said, hey, you got to get this guy. We think that he's hitting the stride and could very well be the case. I just think there's more chance that Dylan Cousins does it. Sub up, Buffalo fans, and let me know what you think. Who is the most likely to have a breakout? and break down their self in, uh, in, in Buffalo, in Sabres land. All right, next, Calgary Flames. And this is an interesting one indeed um, because there's so much happened in Calgary in the offseason here, right? So breakthrough player for the Calgary Flames, I'm going to go – with Dylan Dubé. Dylan Dubé has been just getting better every single year. He, he's a hard worker. He's not a big guy, but he plays with a lot of skill. He's got tons of skill. He's just getting stronger and stronger, and I imagine he'll be even stronger this year to get into the places that he needs to be to score. And if he continues to do that, I'm pretty sure he's going to take at least Blake Coleman's spot, maybe even Tyler Toffoli's spot on the top line. 
That being the case, if everything goes the way I think it could be for Dubé, this could be a big year for him. I think it could be his breakout year. I think it's more, most likely for him that this, this is his big breakout year. Now, breakdown year, and I think this is going to raise the ire of a few Calgary Flames fans out there. Nazem Kadri. Um, I'm sorry, but at 31 years old, you have your best year getting a hundred point or 87 point year over a point a game. First time you've ever come close to doing that on a contract year. That those are a bunch of bang, 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 red flags right there. Very seldom does this end up being that the player continues to keep on going at that pace. And he's not going to have the, He's got Mangio, Panny, and Coleman, maybe Dubé, playing with him. Those are solid players. I mean, especially Mangio, Panny. I'll tell you, um, I just don't see it. I don't see him being able to replicate it here again. I think he goes back to being a 50, 60-point player. At $7 million a year, that's a little on the pricey side for sure. I'm not sure Calgary really had a choice but to give this a shot. But... If I had to take a breakdown player, that would be my breakdown player. My honorable mention is Tyler Toffoli. And that's simply because if he's playing with to anybody that's going to be playing on the right side with uh, Huberto is probably going to get more points than they did last year, especially anybody that wasn't playing with Goudreau last year. So I would say that Toffoli would be my honorable mention. So that's my biggest breakout player and breakdown player for the Calgary Flames. Let me know in the comment section who you think will have the biggest breakout year and the biggest breakdown year, if any at all, Calgary Flames fans. Sub up to my YouTube channel, follow me, and comment in the comment section. All right. Carolina Hurricanes. And in here, I have kind of a surprise with Carolina Hurricanes. We have our breakout player, uh, this is actually, I think I haven't totally gone over. I haven't did all, haven't did guy. I got to get my, my, uh, pie charts out and all of those sort of things spread it all over the floor to, to give you this uh, for sure, for sure. But I think Jesper Kokaniemi is going to be my breakout player for the year. I think. He's been under the radar. I don't know why people are so down on Jesper Kakanaremi. Actually, I do know why. Because he was drafted super high, higher than he was supposed to, used improperly by Montreal, and now he comes over and Brindamore is reforming this kid. And I'm telling you, he's reforming him well. 29 points in 66 games last year, and he played in the bottom of the lineup a lot. Now they're gonna. Now they're giving him a second line center position. This is Brindamore's choice, by the way, almost assuredly. So he's seen enough. When Rod Brindamore says that a guy is going to be a second line center, I'm gonna listen to Rod Brindamore. And uh, not to mention, my eye test says that, and analytics says he's pretty good too. He's got. This is my breakout. I think he's gonna absolutely crush it this year with Terabine in and Nietzsche or whoever else they decide to put on that uh, that side. So he could be my breakout player of the year, Carolina fans. My breakdown player is Stahl. Um, he's just, it's just slowly starting to deteriorate for, for Jordan Stahl. He may stay basically where he, is, where he already was, but I couldn't find anybody else. Uh, Brent Burns was a possibility because of his age, but the guy seems ageless. And put in this new situation, I think he's going to do great. Um, so besides that, I don't really see anybody. I would dare say maybe the goaltending, because they always break down as possible. Anderson Aranta getting injured. Really cross some fingers here, but I'm not going to put any I'm not going to put any voodoo on that. <laughs> I'm going to stick with Jordan Stahl, simply because he it, he has been deteriorating quite a bit. And also, Jack Drury, I think, is going to get a really good shot and every opportunity to take Jordan Stahl's spot. Jordan Stahl could end up being the fourth liner by the end of the year if Jack Drury progresses away. 
I think he could, going by what I saw of him last year when they did play him. I think he could be a third liner already, close to it. So that's my breakdown and breakout players for the Carolina Hurricanes. Carolina Hurricanes fans, sub up to the channel. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think, or fans of everything, for that matter, of all of the picks that I'm doing. Uh, next, Chicago Blackhawks. And you can be rest assured that it was hard to find a breakout player with the Chicago Blackhawks when they don't even care if anybody breaks out. I mean, this team is obviously tank, tank, tank. We haven't seen a tank like this since the Buffalo Sabres tried to get McDavid. And before that, when the Pittsburgh Penguins tried to get Crosby. And here they are trying to get Bedard. And they are tanking like a son of a gun. And uh, so, who's a breakout player? Um, I, I, I don't think it's Domi. I think he's going to, I, you know, I think he's about what he is. I think I, Andre, Andreas Athanasio is like he is. Maybe when all the pressure's off and everything and they just go out there and play. Maybe they're going to go off here. It's, it's possible. But uh, Athenaseo usually gets injured. I don't see anything changing. But I'll give them honorable mentions. But the best I could come up with was Lucas Reichel. Unless Alex Vlasic does play. But from what I heard, he's going down to the AHL this year. They really want him to play in the AHL. But... It's not even really a breakout player because breakout players really are supposed to be in the league a little bit and then boom, they go. But he's going to be on the top line with Taze and Kane. He's probably going to pick up his points and it's the best thing I could come up with to tell you the honest truth. I don't see any other player really being successful on this roster. I certainly don't see the goaltending being any better than it ever was. So, Lucas Reichel. Breakdown player. It's Kane. He's just because he's, just he, he's not going to have... Jonathan Taze is probably going to be as good, if not better. I'd just call that there, okay? Both of these guys are probably going to be traded anyways. But assuming that doesn't happen for a long time, I mean, what's Kane's going to do it all by himself? He's going to be passing to no one now. So, no Doc. You know, no Debrinkat. This team's barely got anything, so I could see his point production falling. And, you know, he's 34 years old now. Also, the desire, all of those things, the heart being in it, I don't know. Uh, he could break down a bit. I, I don't think he's going to break down horribly, but I couldn't pick anybody else because anybody else having a breakdown wouldn't be much different than what they already are. That's the problem, <laughs> you know. So... I'm taking Patrick Kane because his point production will probably fall. It won't affect his trade value at all, and he'll end up getting traded. That's what I think will happen there. Chicago Blackhawks fans, comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think, my friends, about the breakout player and the breakdown player here in the lineup for Chicago Blackhawks. The Colorado Avalanche. And this is such an interesting uh, lineup. Who's going to break out? Out. Well, the obvious one to me is Alex Newhook. And I did a video on here saying, I did a video, I, I think it was talking about the Codry trade, and we got discussing in the comment section with Colorado fans about how they are, Colorado is going to be, you know, lose a lot because of uh, Codry. Codry had a great year, but there wasn't likely that he was going to be able to read to to recreate that again. Um, and he probably won't in Calgary either. But one of, the, one of the reasons why it was a little easier to let him go is Alex Newhook. Alex Newhook has had 30-point seasons the last two years, not playing top line on the top line or on the power play. He's a great five-on-five -five guy, excellent two-way player. In fact, defensively, he's better than Kadri already at 21 years old. And this is huge when you're going to play for Colorado because every single player they have is a, uh, on, in the forward group is a beast defensively. That's what makes this team so great. And I think Alex Newhook offensively is going to fly this year. JT Comfort um, is my breakdown player. And that's not because I don't like him. I just think that 
it's likely that Newhook is going to take a spot in that center position, and he's going to play down in the third line center position with Cogliano and O'Connor, which is going to affect his point production. But uh, it's, and also, I just can't think of who would else would have a breakdown here this year, considering like Manson. But I mean, he's kind of broke down already. I, I don't think he's going to break down much anymore. Eric Johnson could be. I think he stays pretty much where he is now. I don't think he falls too much more than that. And that so I think just because Newhook will probably take a spot, I take JT Comper as a breakdown player and Alex Newhook as a as a break out player. The great thing about this is is it was really hard to find a breakdown player. So that tells you how great of a lineup Colorado has. Colorado Avalanche fans, comment in the comments section. Let me know what you think my fine friends, about your breakdown player and your breakout player. Next, the Columbus Blue Jackets and the breakout player might be, oh, you know what? Just what I'm thinking about it, it could be Boone Jenner. I mean, he's going to be playing in between Lion A and Goudreau. But I have Patrick Laine. I just think Patrick Laine getting fed by Goudreau. This is like the easy one, right? This is a low-hanging fruit. Pat Patrick Laine getting fed by Johnny Goudreau is insane. Uh, I, he, he 50-goal scorer finally again, stays healthy, crushes it, says he loves it in Columbus. I think he's going to be insane. Goudreau will probably be what he always has been. He'll probably stay right about where he was before. Maybe even get more points because, uh, you know, feeding Patrick Lyon, Patrick Lyon, wow. The offensive work of Patrick Lyon will be crazy. Defensively, this team could be in trouble. And my breakdown player, I wanted to talk about this guy too. Eric Branson. Kekka Linen is an unbelievable general manager. He's brilliant. One of the best drafting managers out there. By the way, Kent Johnson will probably play between Goudreau and Line now that I think about it. So Boone Jenner might not have that opportunity. But And Kent Johnson was one of those draft picks I'm talking about. Cole Sillinger. He finds him everywhere. He's awesome. Why then would he take Eric Goudbranson, who really is not a $4 million player? And I had to think about this for a while. It's like, really? I know you're an analytics dude, Kekalein, and obviously the way he constructs his, co his roster is very seemingly very analytics-driven. So Gubranson, who did have a better year in Calgary, probably his best year, for sure, his, it wasn't probably, for sure it was his best year he's ever had. Sutter really got the best out of him. Maybe he can keep that going in here. But $4 million a year is too much, man. He's a 5'6". And I think he's going to fall. I don't think... I think Andrew Peake will probably take him out of that spot. And he ends up playing in the fourth line minutes. And it's going to look bad. But hear me out here. I think part of the reason why they got Goudreau... I'm just going to guess. I don't know for sure about this. But I'm going to guess that Goudreau's wife and Goudranson's wife are tight. They gave Goudreau uh, 9.75 per cap pit. I'm sure they were willing to go as high as 10.5, maybe even 11. So in order to get Goudreau, they said, I'll tell you what, we're going to bring Goudbranson too. We're going to bring Eric too. And he's like, his wife is like, oh my gosh, Eric, we got to bring, we got to go to, I love Eric. So they give Eric Goodbranson about a million and a half more than he should, and it's basically like getting Goudreau for 11 and a half, somewhere around there. Just a theory, not saying that's what happened, but I think that's what happened. Anyways, I think Eric Goodbranson's going to fall here. My honorary mention for breakout player is Adam Boquist. I still think he's just going to keep on getting better and better. And he's going to actually be better than Jones, whom he was traded for. In the long run, Boquist almost assuredly is going to be a better defensive than Jones, defenseman than Jones. He is already better defensively than Jones is. So there you go. All right. Tell me what you think, Columbus Blue Jackets fans. Who's your breakout player and breakdown player of the 
year. Okay. Whoops. Did I hit something? Oh, I got two Columbuses for some reason. I don't know. The Dallas Stars. Um, yes, Dallas Stars. Okay. Breako player for the Dallas Stars. This was a little bit difficult. I, I'm on the fence kind of about it, but I ended up having to pick a guy who I just think is going to break out so many times in his career that he's a safe pick to break out almost every year until he's at least 27 years old. And that's Miro. He's going to end. Um, signing DeBoer, whether you like as a coach, whether you like it or agree or not, one thing for sure, his philosophy is more offensive. And he's getting in probably with uh, Rick Bonus. Uh, he's, Rick Bonus is a tight defensive coach. That's simple as that. And he's going to get more room here for sure with the bore. So I think his numbers could go through the roof. I also think he could even be looking at Norris possibilities here for Miro. He's getting in this year. So to me... It wasn't an easy choice because I like Mason Marchment. I think Ropo Hints can still go off, and Jason Robertson can go cray cray. Cray cray. So that bodes well. That it was really difficult because there were so many players that could do it. But I think Miro Huskinen is just the most likely to go off, 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 especially from where he had 36 points last year. Wouldn't surprise me. He's close to a point a game defenseman this year. So that's pretty going off. That's almost doubling your point production. Breakdown player, I'm just going to keep on going with the same guy I go with every year. And that is Jamie Benn. He just doesn't get better. Just doesn't get better. He's, <laughs> he gets worse every year, and I think it's not going to change here. Sad to say, I, I don't like it. The only thing bad about it is, and the thing that might make him stay kind of in the same spot, is that there's really nobody to take a spot. I don't think there are some guys like Riley Demiani who, had a, who might have a chance in the minors, like Rhett Gardner, Ty Delandria. I mean, these guys don't scream offense right now or ready at the moment. So that's, I think, the thing that is sort of saving him right now. But one thing I got to say is, Dallas has done a hell of a job drafting. I'll tell you that right now. There's a lot of great players coming up through their through uh, their system, and it won't be long before somebody's taking this spot. No doubt about it. There, there's two guys. Oh, Maverick Bork is a guy that's coming up that could take his spot. Wyatt Johnston had an incredible year last year. Logan Stankowski had a great like. There's there's people right on his tail right now to take a spot. Maybe it happens this year, and then for sure you're going to see Jamie Ben on a dumper. Tell me what you think, Dallas Stars fans. Comment in the comment section. Sign up to the YouTube channel. Get yourself subbed up for this frolic, my friends. You don't want to miss all of it. All of it. All right. Next. The Detroit Red Wings. And this is an extremely difficult team, of course, to pick who is going to have the breakout year. There's so many players. I mean, Lucas Raymond's probably going to have a way better year, no doubt about it. I mean, not that it last year was bad. At 20 years old, you pop 57 points. I could see him going off. Tyler Bertuzzi, probably right about where he is right now, but he's fantastic. Um, and they have, you know, it would be wonderful if Zadina was the guy, that's for sure. They certainly have surrounded him with some players that can help him out, like Kubalik from his same country. They're, they're deeper. You know, maybe he's able to get some help from David Perron. They're both the same type of player, shoot first type guys. So David can probably help him quite a bit. But for me, I'm going with actually the older guy in the lineup, and I'm saying that Dylan Larkin finally gets over a point a game this year and goes off. I think he finally has a second line that teams don't have to just focus on him all the time. He's very underrated two-way guy. I think this is his year. He goes, Dylan, everybody goes, this is the Dylan Larkin we've been waiting for. 
And he's always been there. But this is the year he puts up the stats that prove how great he is. I think this is the year. Um, I almost took Mason or Lucas Raymond here. But really, last year was a breakout, and this would just be more of a breakout. And with Dylan Larkin, I suppose you could say he's had breakouts in the past, but he's kind of been at this just below a point a game level for long enough. And I think this is the year he goes cray cray. Okay, and for the breakdown player, I have Suter. Just simply because Andrew Kopp is probably going to take a spot there in the lineup. And, I mean, he did. he's not really that super. He's a good all-around guy. It, Suter is, he can play multiple positions. He can fill spots in your lineup all over the place, and he's great that way. But because of that, the, the added depth in their lineup, I think he's going to be down here playing in, with like Kubelik and Zadina, as they, as they say, and it could be a bit of a struggle for him to get the point production that he has in the past. Also, I think ultimately they would like Michael Rasmussen to have that spot, rather have a big, big third line center. So if he can break out a little bit this year, he'd be able to take that spot, and that would put Suter down on the fourth line. But it was really tough for me to decide who was going to have the breakdown this year because this lineup is so good. Um, I almost went with Ben Chirot, but I think Ben Chirot's going to learn a lot from Maurice Sider. And a lot of people, I know people are automatically going, what, isn't that the other way around? No, I'm sorry, no. Ben Chirot would be an amazing defenseman if he learned how to compact his game and didn't run around all over the place trying to hit people over pinching, all that kind of stuff like that. Maurice Sider already knows that. The guy is well beyond his years. Amazing player. And if Ben Chirot can feed off of that, Ben Chirot at 31 could become the best defenseman he's ever been. So that could be my breakout right there. Also, I want to mention I, uh, I almost took Ville Husso as a breakdown player. I don't know why something in me says that he's not what people think. The thing that's preventing me from it is it's Stevie Eisenman that chose him. Stevie Eisenman is pretty much gets the benefit of any doubt right off the get-go, right? So I didn't put him in there because it's Stevie. Why, man? He's like my favorite male human on the planet. Hard for me to say anything against it. Okay. Even with Ben Chirot, I was like, what? Really? Ben Chirot? Stevie Y, a huge analytics guy, taking Ben Chirot, who's diabolically bad, not die, pretty bad defensively. Seemed odd, but I think that's what, what I said. I think that that's what's going to happen. Tell me, Detroit fans, what you think. Biggest breakout, biggest breakdown player of the Detroit Red Wings. In the comment section, sub yourself up to the channel. Let me know. Edmonton Oilers. And... Breakout player. I think most people are going to be on Kaylor Yamamoto here. And that's fair because he's going to, you know, play that brave style that he plays. And I'm sure he's going to do well. But, and I could also go Evander Kane here because he's going to be playing with McDavid. Uh, he's, you know, he doesn't pay attention to defense all that much, but the guy can pot goals like crazy. It's just I don't know if they can call it a breakout year. He's been around long enough that he's had 40 goals and stuff like that. So I'm not putting him there. My guy is Jesse Puglia Harvey. I think his offense comes this year. Um, I think I think he's going to move up in the lineup quite a bit. I hope that guys like Dreisaitl, uh, I, I hope they play him with, with Dreisaitl and Nugent Hopkins. I like that. Puglia Harvey with Dreisaitl and Nugent Hopkins. Because Dreisaitl could be the best, one of the best defensive players in the league. This could be an amazing shutdown line that gets lots of points. But Dreisaitl has got to come back deep, not fly the zone, and work with these guys down there and play a shutdown type game. Um, it's hard for guys like Dreisaitl and McDavid to do that because their offense is so good. It's so easy to take risks. And most coach will tell them to take risks because – their offense is going to make up for any defensive de de deficiencies for sure. But if they 
it, it, it's always great to have a shutdown line that can score. And Puglia Harvey is a fantastic defensive forward. And Oilers fans out there will say, like, I've had arguments like crazy. He doesn't hit. He hits when he needs to. He, t- he uses the body to get the puck. There's a lot of players like, ooh, they don't even have him in the lineup here right now. Store. Sure. Sorry. They love him. Oh, he's, he's a great defensive. He's a good defensive player. No, he's not. He runs around hitting people and then not getting the puck. It is absolutely useless to hit somebody if the puck ends up on the opponent's stick anyways. In this league nowadays, it's not like back in the 90s. You're not hurting guys as much as you used to before. In fact, if you ask most NHL players, when you hit somebody, it almost hurts you as much as it hurts them. So hitting is great. I Don't get me wrong. If a guy's in your way, label them. Freaking right. So it brings energy, all that kind of stuff like that. But going out of your way to run around all over the place? No. And Jesse doesn't do that. Jesse plays a fantastic positional game. And thank God Holland's son got through to him to keep him. Because Holland, you know, is kind of an old school guy. But his son came out and said, Jesse Puglia Harvey, people have more shots when he plays on his line. Uh, everybody plays has better defensive numbers as far as expected goals against everything when Pulley Harvey is on their line. So you can argue whether you're, you, I watch the games. Well, let me tell you this way. Joe Sackick watches the games too. He's probably one of the greatest hockey minds that ever played on the ice. And he is a massive analytics guy. So. You can try to fight against it all you want. Analytics are hugely important in this game. Takes biases away and gives us a new perspective. Jesse Puglia Harvey is my breakthrough player for the Edmonton Oilers. Barry. And by the way, I'm 50-some years old. I had old-school biases myself. Analytics have helped me become a better student of the game. Uh, Barry is my breakdown player. Um, to say, oh, how does he break down anymore? Well, last year he actually came around and started playing a better defensive brand of hockey. I have to admit it. It's true. I still don't think I want him on my top six, and he probably won't be in the top six. That's why I say he's the breakdown player here, because Evan Bouchard is probably going to be taking the power, away, power play time away from him this year. This is a year that Evan Bouchard... Probably one year, one year of bulking up will probably come in about 207, another 7 to 10 pounds added on him. Bigger, stronger, and he's the future. Barry is not. He'll be down playing with, uh, they got him playing with Broberg here. I would rather, I like him better with Kulak, but it's hard to put Broberg and Bouchard together. So I don't know what, I think Bouchard, Nurse. Broberg, CC Kulak, Barry. That's kind of what I would do, but we'll see. And on an honorable mention, and I got, I hope it's not true. I'm an Edmonton Oilers fan. Honorable mention for breakdown is Jack Campbell. And that's simply because he does it all the time. He's one of those goaltenders historically that is either absolutely insanely good or absolutely horrible. It's one of the two most of the time. And I just, I, yeah, I, I, just because of history, I got to put him in there as an honorable mention. I, God, please, some goaltending coaches, something happens and have this guy be consistent all through the year. But histor- historically speaking, it just doesn't seem to happen. So I didn't put him in there. All right, next, Florida Panthers. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think, boys and girls, about uh, the Edmonton Oilers there. You sub up to my YouTube channel. Let me know. I don't care. You can get in there. Call me whatever you want. I don't care. It's fine. I'll call. I'll still talk to you, by the way. I'm not going to block you. I'm not going to anything. When you're commenting in the comment section, be however way you want to be. But you don't have to be polite. This is hockey, man. When you're on the ice playing hockey, if you played hockey, ain't nobody being polite. And if you can't take it, then I guess 
I'm generally not the leader of the unpoliteness, but if you come in and want to engage with it, let's go. I don't mind. It's fun. <laughs> what stays in the, what happens in the comment section stays in the comment section. Uh, it has nothing to do with how I treat you as a person. All right. Florida Panthers. Breakout player. To me, this is easy, easy, easy. It is, well, sort of easy. Anton Lundell. I'm going to be picking this guy every year. This Anton Lundell is just an absolute beast. He's crazy good, man. He was one of the reasons why they were a lot that that they weren't too uh, worried about getting rid of Huberto. Also, it seems we I've been talking about analytics guy all the way through here. And Zito is a huge, seemingly huge analytics guy. All the players he picks up are analytically strong defensively. He's building a team much like Colorado had. Matthew Kachuk, for instance, is one of the best defensive forwards in the league. Huberto was not. He was the opposite, actually. He was not very good defensively. And Kachuk had 104 points last year. Is he going to be able to do that with Barkov? We won't get too far into that. But Anton Lundell, I think this year, will take Sam Bennett's spot on that second line. And I actually could see Sam Bennett eventually being moved for some defense, which is going to be could be could end up being a problem there for Florida. Actually, probably will be a problem for Florida. But I love that guy, kid. I think he could be almost as good as Alexander Barkov or as good. Imagine that. That top two. Woo! Crazy. I think he's going to have a six secure. And because I say that, my breakdown player is Sam Bennett. Because if he comes down and plays with Lomberg and White, he's likely not going to get the point production he did the year before. And he, and he really is one of those guys that, you know, his whole thing is he wants to play center. He's a center. He wants to play center. Kind of what happened in Calgary, why he moved over to Florida. And there's going to be lots of spots for him out there, probably for, you know, that, that can take him as a second-line center. I'm not saying he's not a second-line center. I think he is. But he's just not Lundell. And that could have him moving down. Honorable mention. Uh, Sergei Bobrovsky, if Spencer Knight becomes as good as I think he could be this, as soon as this year, he's going to have a breakdown year, probably in the sense that he's not going to get the games, all of those sort of things like that. It's only a matter of time before Spencer Knight takes over for him. And honorable mention for breakdown would be Aaron Ekblad, simply because all the pressure is going to be on Aaron. You just take out that top line and you take out their defense until they get somebody in there to to some other players in there. Gudis and Stahl just ain't going to do it, man. Sorry, ain't going to do it. But I'm taking Bennett for now. Florida Panthers fans, sub up to my YouTube channel. Comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about what I just said. My take. My take. Give me your take. Love to hear from you. Next. The L.A. Kings. And this one is tough because there are so many breakout players here. I almost went with Arthur Kaliev. I really like him a lot. I think he's going to be very good. Um, and for my breakdown player, it's going to be because of Arthur Kaliev that he I have him as my breakdown player. But I went with Sean Dursey. I think Dursey's going to take Matt Roy's spot on that lineup. Uh, he's just so, so slick of a player. I think it's kind of a waste to have him there in the third pairing. Matt Roy is more of a third pairing guy. And he can he, to play with Walker. Not to mention Dursey would do well to play with Alexander Adler before he retires. Get some help defensively from Alexander Adler to become... Because if any player really had to learn as he went about becoming a good defensive player, it was Alexander Edler. He did it throughout his career, and he, he paid attention to it like a craft. And he did it very well. And he's still very good at 36 years old. I think it would do Jersey well to play with Edler up there on that line. So 
I, I just think Jersey's going to go off this year. Call it a hunch. Call it, I mean, I watched a lot of LA games last year. I, nothing seems to be holding this kid back. His, his, his uh, ceiling is, could be anywhere. <clears throat> and I think he's going to be fantastic. So that's my pick. Honorable mention, quick could have a down year if Peterson does pick it up. Uh, he could have a breakdown year. He's old enough that that would be the case. Uh, but, sorry, that's for, but my breakdown player is Victor Arvidsson, and that's because of Alexander Kaliev. I think Kaliev is going to be able to take that spot from him this year. He's going to move down. Maybe his point production doesn't change because, you know, Quinton Byfield's probably going to be better, almost was my breakout player. I think he probably has two more years yet before you can call it a true breakdown, but you never know. Um, but I think he could take a, a bit of a dr drop. But the thing is here, I had a hard time finding the breakdown player. And that bodes well for the LA Kings. Because if you don't have any breakdown players, really, everybody's... I had a much harder finding a break, to picking one breakout player. Which tells you that this is a team that's ready to boom, pop, break out, go crazy. All right. Kings fans, let me know in the comment section what you think about all that. Sub up to the YouTube channel. Let me know. I'd love to talk to you. Finally, Minnesota Wild, and I had a tough time with this line. With breakout play, except for the breakout. I think the breakout is pretty cut and dry. I almost went with Joel Erickson Eck because I think he could win a selfie, which would be the breakout. And could very well be the breakout, but I just when I when he's on when this kid's on the ice, I can't get my eyes off of him. He's incredibly slick and confident, and I just don't think he's going to be going anywhere but up. And that's Matthew Boldy. Matthew Boldy is amazing. Um, so much so, it would not surprise me at all. If he takes, and this is my breakdown player, because I really couldn't really find anybody. Nothing really screamed breakdown player to me in this lineup. Possibly Goligoski because he's going to be 38 years old. But, I mean, he's better than expected already at 37. Zuccarello. I think Zuccarello could take a step down. Or Marcus Foligno could come down to the third line with Goudreau and Duhaim. And Zuccarello could try to add more offense to that Erickson Greenway combination. In which case, maybe not. But I think it's possible that Zuccarello may start taking a step down in this lineup. And guys like Matthew Boldy are going up in the lineup. So, in that way, Zuc could take a step down. I mean, 79 points in 70 games is hard to... You better be ripping it up, Matthew, to take him away. But I think it's possible it could happen. But the good thing about it was, it was really difficult to take a breakdown player. I think most people will go with Marc Andre Fleury at 38 years old. But I'll tell you what. After seeing him in Chicago last year, I know his numbers don't scream awesome, but the fact that he kept his save percentage above 0 .900 on that team is amazing. It's freaking amazing. And I watched you're not I watched a lot of Chicago games last year. And no, I'm not a Chicago fan. I watch a divorce worthy amount of hockey. I'm also a professional handicapper. If you if you like making money, let me know in the comment section. I'll get you in. And uh, we made like crap loads last year. Crap loads of money. Um, so I watch games because I picked a team to not score or whatever. So I watched a lot of Chicago games and it wasn't because of flurry. They did bad. I'll tell you that right now. He was off the freaking chain. Most of the time, probably will against Minnesota as well. That's why I don't have him as my breakdown player. All right. Tell me what you think. Chicago fans. Let me know in the comment section. That's my, I went that long. Holy smokes. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Okay. Bye.